Hello, everybody. All right, well, thank you for having me, and well done to all the companies and individuals here, of course, surrounded by a bunch of people who have a bunch of fans and things here. It's absolutely great. I haven't been this nervous in a long time. Um, I mean, I've been just kind of stuck in the basement, working away. So, you know, when I'm working at home from one of the many spots that I work in, I bounce around and I'm really comfortable and cozy. And at times like this, I tend to get in my head a little bit. So, uh, therefore, the script was all pretty highlighting. <laughs> so, the, the first time I was at an event like this, I saw Kurt Nelson in the restroom. A lot of you probably know him. We were washing our hands. Happy birthday, you know, twice. And I'm trying to just focus on washing my hands, which of course Kurt wanted to give me advice. So he gave me some very good advice. He said, stick to the script and you'll be fine. I think when it comes to giving a speech, that's really good advice. And I'm glad I had it that day. Uh, but is this the way to go about the rest of life and business? In life and business, the playing field changes all the time. It's changing every second, really. And things are moving all around us while that's happening. We each get to choose if we will be committed and comfortable as we go through life. Not bad, right? Committed and comfortable. Or if we'll be hungry. John asked me to speak about how we've been able to recruit and retain employees in Urbana and make Clickstop a fast growing, cool place to work. First, Urbana is a really great location. There are lots of people that commute right past our facility every day on the way to their job in another town. Lots of great Benton County and, and Centerpoint, Urbana, Minton, Shellsburg area employees. We've had the opportunity to be considered by them because it's convenient. Second, and what I'm going to spend most of my time today on speaking about is company culture and how that's power, um, given us the power to fuel those who are hungry or kill their passion. One or the other, you can, company culture can either fuel somebody up or kill their passion. I'd like to help you see the significant difference between someone who is hungry compared to someone who is committed and comfortable. Engaging those people who are hungry can drive business results and changing your tune from committed and comfortable to hungry can change your personal outcomes. So Clickstop today is an umbrella company that offers shared services to our company owned brands and external clients. Since early on, we've been laser focused on growth and company culture. One supports the other, and this is the company we wanted to build. Fast growing, cool place to work. For the right person, what is cool about working at Clickstop is the emphasis we put on how we work, which we refer to as our culture. Some of the ex essential characteristics and beliefs are as follows. One, team first. Individuals who consistently make choices that benefit themselves more than the whole stand out at Clickstop and not in a good way. We appreciate and recognize those who put others first and look out for the entire team, not just themselves or those relationships that they have. Team players are the people you want to go to battle with every day. Hire and retain those who put, put the, the team, team and the company, the company above all, all else. else. The next, the next courage. courage, I'll be, I'll brief. be brief. A truly, a truly courageous, courageous and humble person, person can do the right thing and do it with confidence. It's huge. If you haven't, read about level five leadership from Jim Collins. It will help you recognize this trait and you'll be able to hire and retain courageous, confident people. Another, accountability. Accountability is a good thing. Some people consistently resist accountability conversations, whether giving or receiving the message. That resistance slows everyone down. It's not good for individuals or the company when this drags out. Hire and retain people who understand accountability and who allow it to happen and who make it happen. So how have we done it? Well, these things matter to us. Team players, courageous, humble, confident people, and those who understand and encourage accountability. Those things aren't easy, but for someone who is hungry, not just committed and comfortable, it's far easy, easier. A hungry person will persevere. Hungry produces results and is inspiring to those around you. If you assemble a group of hungry people, you are much more likely to have a fast growing company 
and a cool place to work. Committed and comfortable people produce average and ordinary results and often miss expectations or don't set them at all. Hungry people will accomplish almost anything and oftentimes faster than anyone thought possible. So if you wanna win big and accomplish amazing things, it, it helps to be hungry. Every company represented here today has at least one and probably many hungry people employed. Maybe it's you, maybe you are thinking of that hungry team member that makes such a, a huge difference every day. Regardless, that hunger is coming from within the person. It's a choice, just like being committed and comfortable is a choice. And organizations can influence that choice. So think about the difference, committed and comfortable, not bad, or hungry. So before I go much further, I want to point out that we're not hungry all of the time. It's ebb and flow. Even me, when I eat an entire pizza by myself, I'm usually not hungry for a while. So you see my point, we're not hungry all the time. Also, you can't measure someone's hunger and it isn't constant, but you know it when you see it. Imagine that person that you know who is a really good eater. They are the epitome of hungry at the table, right? They sit down and they're practically licking their chops. Maybe you're thinking of your dog when you get the treat bowl out. So hungry and focused on the prize that they're drooling. You see why being hungry is so important. There's no messing around when someone is hungry. It's game on, eye on the prize, go like crazy, no regrets, no option but winning. Right, so hire and retain hungry people. Now, I hate to do this to you, but imagine the committed and comfortable person again. You see the stark contrast from the drooling dog who's, who's going to take down every treat in his way to the committed and comfortable. I'm here and I'll, I'll do what I need to do, kind of a mindset. Does a lifetime of committed and comfortable serve you well? And will con committed and comfortable get you what you want? Hungry employees create results. They learn and grow faster than others and they get to keep those learning experiences for themselves. They're hard to come by and their value to an organization is far more than those who are only committed and comfortable. And you might be thinking that committed and comfortable doesn't sound that bad. We all know there are plenty of people who hang around in organizations who are not committed. You're right, you're better than them. Keep in mind though that even when you're committed, if you aren't hungry, it's really easy to quit. So I bet you don't have to think too long or look too far to think about someone who has quit. There are more people quitting than there are people that are hungry. This could explain why it's, it's fairly easy to do amazing things when you are hungry. We all have talents and when we're hungry and put those talents to use while so many others around us are quitting, it's hard to not accomplish amazing things. John asked me today again to speak about ClickStop and how we've been consistently fast growing, cool place to work. And I gave it some thought and I'm boiling it down to being hungry. I have a short time here, but looking back in my reflection, it was about hunger. It was about my hunger, my wife's hunger, our family's hunger, the people we put around us and their hunger. I was hungry, she was hungry. We got support and encouragement. We surrounded ourselves with more hungry people and separated ourselves from those who brought us down. And lastly, we never quit. In the beginning, we had nothing to lose and everything to gain. Nicole and I grew up in the 80s and 90s, and of course, we wouldn't have it any other way. We were free from social media, free from cameras on every corner, free to ride our bike around town with almost no worries, jean shorts that were once pants, and coming alive of rap, metal, and grunge. Instant gratification was a treat, not so much an entitlement like it is today. Everyone was telling me that college was the path to future success. I knew that college wasn't for me by the time I was 14. After I dropped out of college, I had a friend who was a doctor today tell me that I have to go back to school, that I can't live the rest of my life as a salesman. Well, I had no intentions of either. And what was right for him and what he was hungry for was becoming a doctor, and he did that. What was right for me was something different. What was the same for both of us was that the paths we 
chose were the paths we were hungry for. In 2002, we were 25 years old, our son was four years old, and we got married. There was a lot at stake, and being committed wasn't enough. Quitting wasn't an option. This was around the first time I tried starting a business. We were dreamers, and dreaming big helped fuel our hunger. Dreaming together creates a hunger for life. It fuels both of us. It fuels our relationship. Having a hunger for life totally changes the way we go about our day and puts us on a different path than just being committed and comfortable. From the beginning, we put ourselves around people that were hungry. We've been fortunate to have many past and present hungry ClickStop team members, and the business has benefited greatly from that. Now being hungry in a startup environment looks a lot different than being hungry at ClickStop today, but at the core, it's the same. It's people choosing to be hungry, not just committed. If you're going to do something, do it all the way. If you don't, you risk letting your actions suck the life out of you. You'll begin to think your capabilities are limited and that the world isn't treating you as well as it is others. You will start to believe that average and ordinary is all that you will be and once you believe it happens so why in the world would you want to just go through mo motion the motions month after month and year after year whether you're 20 or 80 you can choose to be hungry and do something that matters something that matters to you and to those around you something that fuels you up inside instead of showing up every day committed only to quit so you can be comfortable there are so many opportunities to quit but if you choose to be hungry you won't quit don't let that be you don't let it be the people around you that you carry up care about fuel your hunger and fuel someone else's hunger in the early days of clicks up it was this appetite that we had early on that was so prevalent and meaningful the same appetite exists today but not like it used to it would be difficult to recreate the startup environment and the hunger that existed the first 10 years. But what I know is that it was the driving force and why things went like they did. There was no alternative. Quitting was not an option. Losing was not an option. Only pushing through every challenge, big and small, and never, ever quitting. I know that without hunger, click stop would not exist. I'm getting there. I know. Business is soaked in quitting. This is the opportunity. It's soaked in quitting. Imagine a sopping wet towel over the top of your business full of quitting. It's gross, right? The extra weight of that soaking wet towel of quitting, bogging you down and bogging your company down, crushing your dreams, wrapped around every angle of your body, crushing the dreams of others who were once full of hunger. It's a lot to handle, but we live in it every day. Don't be a quitter. Just choose to be hungry. Hungry employees matter. You know, many times someone quits and stays. Quitting is all around us. We quit friendships and stay. We quit marriages and stay. We quit working out and stay. Have you ever just laid on the floor during your workout and like, I quit. And you tell yourself you quit and you do. It's that easy. You just, you tell yourself and you quit. I've done it before. I know some of you have also done it. It's hard to be hungry and, and you have to know your purpose. People quit their jobs and stay, they quit their managers, they quit their teams, they quit on their families and they're quitting on their dreams. So have you already quit on your dreams and resigned yourself to committed and comfortable because it's what most everyone else is doing? Here's what I'm hoping will happen as a result of my time here today. I hope that someone has a light bulb moment. If that's you, I hope that you stop thinking that committed and comfortable is good enough and that you stop thinking that if you're committed and comfortable that great things will happen for you you get what you give and you give what you will get and if you give you will get I'm sorry trust the system put yourself out there do the hard things if you don't you'll get average and ordinary if you do there's almost no stopping you now go do it because no one else is gonna do it for you congratulations to all of you and take care and be kind.
give you some space. So, Tim, tell us about Urbana and why Urbana. I know that's from your neck of the woods is where you grew up. And so did you ever think about moving it somewhere else, starting it somewhere else? And how important was Urbana to your initial success? Yeah, great question. So we actually started out of our home in Waterloo and uh, we hopped around a couple of different places in Waterloo uh, where we could get free space or cheap space when when it was just a couple of us and um, my best friend and employee number one his name is Ben Reckimer uh, was working for me at the time and still is today and um, his fiance was uh, from closer to Iowa City in the North Liberty area and they were going to move to North Liberty and um, so I I had the the moment where I thought to myself am I gonna keep this employee because he's moving to North Liberty and stay in Waterloo or, or are we going to move and be closer to him? And, you know, tying this into my message, he was hungry. He's still hungry. And we decided to move our business closer to him. So why Urbana was, uh, the question to Ben was, Ben, how far south do I have to move in order to get you to drive every day to come to work? And that's how we started our, our pursuit of looking in the Urbana area. Um, and otherwise, you know, Urbana has been really great. Um, at the time they helped us, um, get into our, our first location because they had an industrial park there with inexpensive land. It was $10,000 an acre, 3.6 acres, minimal building requirement, um, challenges. And then when we expanded along the interstate, um, that was really a, a compilation of the city and the developer, the owner of the land and click stop all chipping in to, um, take on the expense of building that project. And I never realized how important being close to the interstate and having all that visibility would be. It was far more impactful than what I thought it was going to be at the time. So, so talk about your workforce and your employees and they're from all around the corridor. I know. Did you have a tough time selling them to come to Urbana? I know you talked about your, your, your best friend who's still working with you, but can you talk a little bit about the culture you created in your company to be able to get people there and keep them there? Yeah, well, I think we might have a new challenge in front of us with all of the work from home that has become a really new expectation of, of everyone that we're, we're all trying to evaluate. Um, but you know, we're about 16 minutes north of the Boyson road exit. So it's not too bad. You're going the opposite direction of traffic. So that's helpful. And, and like I said, too, we, we have people that live in Vinton or Urbana and they were getting in the car and driving to Cedar Rapids or Waterloo or somewhere else, the same of independence driving to Cedar Rapids as an example. Um, and they drive right by every day. So now they see us and they also can shorten their trip. Um, so we had some real good success with that. A lot of people that used to, you know, make Cedar Rapids trips every day. Um, and being flexible with our workforce too. Uh, the number one thing that we're, we're always rated for in all the, the cool place to work type surveys is our flexibility. It, it always comes out to be the number one thing. And it's because we, we're really focused on getting the job done well. And, you know, it's not an environment where, people are saying they, they left 10 minutes early. They weren't here at eight 30. Um, you know, we're more like, are you okay? You're not here. You're here every day. I just want to make sure you weren't in the ditch type conversations. But, uh, the flexibility that we've offered has been really huge. Um, and then, you know, just like the chance to work around a group of people that are hungry. Um, uh, we've heard it over and over from the people that work at click stop is that they get a chance to work with these really amazing people. And, um, we really focus on trying to keep all those amazing people as much as we can and, and fill the building up with, with more amazing people. Um, so that's, that's been a real focus of ours. So was there some book, was there some organization, some consulting firm or something that helped you at the very beginning figure out how to have such a good culture or is it just something that you 
new from your previous sales experience? How did you capture that so early on at the uh, company? Um, so I knew what I didn't want and that was the experiences that I had had prior. Um, like I said before, I knew college wasn't for me. Then I, I went to work a couple of different places. The first two career paths that I went down, uh, one in building materials was for pay less, ca pay less cash ways. They went bankrupt, right? As I was starting to feel like, you know, I could do something in this field. Then I worked for a steel roll forming company and they went bankrupt right as I was starting to figure it out. And I watched, you know, not so much at Payless, we had a wonderful management team and group of employees at the Waterloo store that I was at. Um, that was all great, but at corporate, apparently it was, it was poorly run and it didn't go well. Um, so I watched that happen and, and, and then at our, uh, the steel company I worked for, uh, things just didn't go well there. And I thought, you know, I can do a lot better than this if I just do something on my own. I'll figure this out. I'll make it work. And if I have to, I can always go back to that. So um, at the time, I really had nothing to lose. That was a big part of it. Um, I've had people ask me, you know, it must have been a huge risk, so on and so forth. And we had nothing to lose. We were a young, you know, couple early on. We, were, we weren't married yet. We were working through our, our personal challenges, deciding if, when, how we were going to get married. And thankfully, we made it through all of that. Um, so those were the things that were really challenging. Um, not so much a, there wasn't a book or a single influence. I'd say it was just the experiences that I had. Um, and then I've said it before when I speak at things like this, but, um, literally growing up, um, uh, my parents told me I could do anything. They basically said, if you put your mind to it, you can do it. If anyone tells you otherwise, just distance yourself, get away, run, run the other way. Those are the kind of words coming out of their mouth. So super valuable lesson because you just go, you just persevere and you, it's, it's on you, you make it happen. And, and today it's, you know, it's, it's crazy. I, I mean, I suppose if I had to, I could maybe do this again, but there was some luck involved. We had some great people around us and very fortunate to just throughout these, these years have uh, really great people uh, both at the company and come through the company that are no longer there. And that, that makes all the difference. So can you talk about the, the ESOP strategy and has that reinvigorated you in the organization with uh, keeping the, the growth and the coolness going? Um, so yeah, ESOP, first of all, in terms of has it reinvigorated us, when you become an ESOP company, you're essentially creating an, an, a, pre, an, a, a share of the company that goes to employees and they get the appreciation rights to it. So when they get it on day one, it's not worth all that much. It's the growth that happens. So when, when we became an ESOP company, we recommitted to growing, you know, we were at a time where it was easy for us to go. We've had a long run of growth. Like how long is this going to last? Can we keep doing it? All of that. Um, but we knew that growing was an important part of becoming an ESOP company. And that if we were going to do that, we had to commit to grow, which is why we also at the same time became a shared service type of organization so that we had a scalable platform to work with. So we did that. It was costly and we put all that in place and, and we're just kind of starting to rebound from that. Um, so I'm looking forward to the value creation that's going to have. Um, but the, the essence of how we became an ESOP company uh, was really that over the years when you get the publicity that, you know, we've been so thankful to have from CBJ and others, um, you get lots of phone calls as well. And you have people calling you saying, you know, want to buy a part of your company, want to buy all your company, this, that, all these weird opportunities. And I took those things home too many times and it, it just derailed home conversations. It derailed me from what I was working on at ClickStop and what I was building. And so finally we said, we're not doing that. Putting a stake in the ground, here's what we're doing. And then we're committed to that. And then we just don't have to entertain that. We can just quickly hit delete. We know what we're committed to and we're moving forward in this way. So the nice thing is it gives us a transition path out of the business as well, which is important. 
someday and and hopefully sooner than later you know i don't plan to be doing this for my whole life not not going to be a die at the desk person as they say um so this is a, a transition plan out that we can do on our timeline as well it doesn't have to happen all at once it could take 10 20 years if we want it to so when you launched the company how far out was your plan and did you anticipate it getting this big and this successful it sounds like your folks instilled a an optimism in you but how far did you think it was going to go how how big did you think it was going to get can you talk a little bit about that the timing of when we started the business was pretty much impeccable when it comes to e-commerce. It was 2004 when we started building the website, launched it in 2005. And, you know, for those of you who spent any time on the internet back then uh, looking at e-commerce businesses, I mean, it was, it was pretty easy actually. Um, the tools were kind of archaic and they, they built them for, um, you know, it was simple. It wasn't all that complex. And, um, we just, we just went after it and started, started slow and then started to learn. And, uh, we found out that, um, e-commerce was a great place to be. And so we, we just hunkered down and focused on, on e-commerce. Um, John, the, the point of your question was what again? I'm sorry. I don't think I'm answering this well. Yes. Yeah. So, you know, optimism, um, being naive, I would say, uh, we had huge goals. You know, we thought to be honest, you know, that we're today, we're about a $70 million revenue company. I think early on, some of the calculations we ran is that we thought we could be that in 2013. Um, you know, when you start to look at the data, when you're call it a micro small company of a million dollars or less, and you get all this data from around the country, and then you think about the population you do all, you know, you can use data and create any story that you want. And we, that was the story that we told ourselves. But um, I would say, you know, all along, I just, I knew anything was possible. I knew that what was so neat at the time was that it was Overture search marketing, which became Yahoo search mar marketing. And it was, Google was the second place that I went. And it was kind of the up and coming thing, but it wasn't, you know, multiples bigger than Overture and Yahoo yet. And, you know, everything was transparent and is transparent on the web. You go to the web, you're in your market, you search a keyword phrase, you see the competition, you see their prices, you see their website, you understand everything about it. Then you go to the advertising platform and you see how much they're spending to be in position number one. And then you do the math and, and you say, well, this is really possible. And when I started, I started spending $4 a day on paid advertising, then eight, then 16, then like 25, 50, a hundred. And we spend a lot of money on advertising today and on paid ads, we spend over $4 million a year to put it in perspective, huge opportunity out there to, to go after e-commerce in the market. But we thought it could just be enormous. And I mean, it's pretty big. Uh, we also thought we could do almost any type of brand. And we quickly found that out as well by startups and acquisitions that um, the brand still matters a lot when it comes to e-commerce and it, today even more so than it did before. All right, so last question. Was there a critical hire early on that helped you organizationally take the company to where you wanted it to be? Was there an HR manager? Was Who was that? And how did you get him or her on board? And what did they do to take it to the next level? Yeah. I, you know, early on, I think of two critical hires, um, you know, besides Ben, but I would say Ben's strength is not organizationally and, and forward looking in that way. Ben was a critical hire. But the two that, that really helped us scale, if you will, and get ready for growth would be um, Sean Linderbaum and Todd Kinnan. 
and Sean came first. He helped me develop the website as a contractor in 2004. We launched in 2005. And then I think in 2008 is when he came to work for the company and uh, left his, his really nice job at John Deere to pursue uh, being a partner with ClickStop and worked for the company for about three years and then decided to go out on his own and start his own e-commerce company. So he did that and he's doing really well with that. Uh, but he had a, a master's in information systems and just thought that way. And technology was easy for him to understand and, and these weren't things I was strong in. So we offset each other really well. And then uh, Todd Kinnan was my uh, banker. He worked at Bankers Trust and he just kind of caught the bug, the click stop bug, the more he worked with me and, and ultimately kind of jokingly haphazardly said he'd be interested in coming to work um, at click stop and um, hired him. I think that was in 2010. Um, so those two come to mind. Todd basically um, took our entire financial system, you know, he influenced our, our sales and, and purchasing processes and was really focused on the processes, data integrity, all those types of things. And then just from a, uh, as a person, just an exceptional human, just an exceptional person, um, more than anyone in, that has worked at ClickStop, uh, Todd has caused me to grow more than anyone. So those are the, the two people that I would point to. You have to have those people. You know, I, I consider ClickStop the kind of the Google of the corridor, what they've been able to accomplish in Urbana, Iowa is remarkable. And so we're fortunate to have you here in the corridor and we're fortunate to uh, continue to report on all the great things that you, you folks are doing uh, there. So thanks again, Tim. Okay, now, so now let's hear about some of the other local companies who are having great success with their recruitment and retention efforts. Here to talk about the selection process and present the Workforce Leaders Awards is Kim Bechica, Vice President of Continuing Education and Training Services at Kirkwood Community College. Please help me welcome Kim Bechica up to the podium. Good afternoon. Thanks, John. As you know, this is one of our favorite events at Kirkwood to be able to sponsor because it really does give us a chance to say thank you to all of our employers that are willing to share their innovations with others. And I think that goes to Tim's comments about sharing your hunger um, with others as well. So um, we really appreciate this um, opportunity in addition to the All-Stars. You know, at, back to Tim, featuring the All-Stars, showing young professionals very hungry in their career fields is a great example um, to get uh, interest and the word out about these great careers that we have in the corridor. So it is my pleasure to first talk with you about how we handled the nominations for the workforce leaders um, part of this event. So the Corridor Business Journal sought nominations for this year's workforce leaders in June. Not, and that seems like eons ago. Nominations were open to all companies in Kirkwood's seven county region. An independent panel of industry experts selected this year's honorees across five categories, including two honorees in the most effective internship program. The selection committee makes this distinction when two nominations stand out but are not necessarily comparable due to company size and resources. We will start by announcing the best internship program at a small sized company and then work our way through the rest of the honorees following the hiring process from recruitment to retention. In addition to celebrating the honoree's success, we feel it's important to share their best practices. Again, one of the things I like most about this program. So that other companies in the region can learn and benefit through your innovations. To help you get a better understanding of each program, we have invited the honorees to create a one minute video about their best practices. And many of them have chosen to do so. We will play 
from videos throughout the awards presentation. The CBJ has also compiled highlights from each of the honorees winning strategies in a special workforce leaders publication, which you will all have a copy of. I encourage you to take notes as we go along the way, uh, make notes of people you may want to give a call or network with later. Um, and for those joining online, you should be receiving the link to the digital it, uh, edition in your confirmation email. As each company is announced, a representative will come up to the stage and receive the award from John. Now, typically, honorees shake John's hand, but John has said, no, not this year. We'll abide by safety. I couldn't even get him to do a fist bump or elbow bump. So, you know, we're, we're being very safe this year. Uh, representatives uh, can start making their way to the stage um, the first time your company's name is announced. Audience, please hold your applause until after the video has played, and I will say, please help me congratulate, and I'll give the company name, um, and we'll do a great round of applause for them. So let's get started. So it is my pleasure to announce the first award, which is the most effective internship program at a small company. This award goes to ProCircular. Since its inception in 2016, ProCircular has employed 20 interns and hired 57% of them into full-time positions. Through partnerships with area educational institutions, internships are offered in a variety of departments, ranging from security engineering to marketing and sales. ProCircular is proud to offer paid internships at above market wages. The internships provide real, wor real world experience, not just busy work. From day one, interns are introduced and treated as functional team members. With proper training and guidance, they are integrated into real time operations with clients, problem solving, scheduling, tracking, and more. The company recognizes that cyber, the cybersecurity industry is rapidly evolving, and it is important to identify talent and help these up and coming IT heroes grow to ensure a bright future of cybersecurity in the corridor. Aaron Warner, Chief Executive Officer at ProCircular, is accepting the award. Now let's watch their video. I spent 12 months as a project management intern with ProCircular before joining the team as a full-time creative technical writer. I started an internship with ProCircular while I was in high school leading a cybersecurity club. Being an intern at ProCircular has been a great experience. I started out as a project management intern in October 2018. I worked in that position for about nine months before going on full-time. I'm after graduation. I think a lot of my time at ProCircular has been a very valuable learning experience. The internship was a fantastic way to bring hands on experience in the career of cybersecurity. Everyone is so willing to help me learn, and I'm also put in positions where I'm able to grow in better important working skills like communication, problem solving, and teamwork. We've had a lot of great interns that have uh, went on to be full time employees and I really would not be where I'm at today without that experience. Great, please help me congratulate Aaron and his team from ProCircular. Okay, the next award for most effective internship program at a large company goes to Transamerica. Transamerica's internship program serves an average of 178 students annually since 2015 and includes over 13 areas of interest. Internships are offered three times per year, beginning in the spring, summer, and fall to students who are currently enrolled in college. Continued learning through mentorship and networking is important at Transamerica, and each intern is assigned a mentor to provide them with support and resources along the way. Interns are also encouraged to reach out to entry, middle, and executive level employees to learn more about their career path. University Relations and Campus Recruiter Jacinta Jargo is accepting the award for Transamerica. Let's watch their video. Thank you. 
Birthplace of the future and for workforce success is that of an inclusive community with a diversity of cultures and backgrounds of value. At Transamerica, we have found interns bring new ideas and fresh perspectives, and their drive to make an impact has led to process improvement and increased engagement. In order for our interns to apply the knowledge gained in the classroom to be impactful in a real world setting, we provide the tools, resources, and support to be successful. Our team of campus recruiters lead weekly events including social activities, roundtables, and networking sessions to provide opportunities for students to better understand our business, get to know one another, and interact with company leaders. Over the course of their internship experience, Transamerica interns can expect to make an impact, network, and discover career paths and future opportunities, all while developing crucial skills and completing meaningful work within their field of study. Please help me congratulate Jacinta and her team uh, with the internship program. Congratulations. The award for most effective marketing and recruitment campaign goes to Frontier Co-op. Frontier Co-op has set out to do good by breaking down barriers that prevent hardworking candidates from getting jobs. For instance, to combat the issue of affordable childcare, Frontier offers subsidized childcare on-site at its Norway location. They have also added a reimbursement benefit for parents at other locations to cover a portion of childcare expenses. Between these options, the company helps care for the children of 73 employees. Another significant barrier is public transportation. To overcome this obstacle, the company partnered with Willis Dady Homeless Services to provide transportation each day to Norway. Last but not least, Frontier partnered with Catherine McCauley Center and Willis Dady to establish an apprenticeship program. The program has provided training and stable income for 143 women, refugees, immigrants, and the homeless. It also gives second chances to candidates with a criminal background, and they have hired about 35% of production employees from this program. Megan Schulte, Vice President of Human Resources at Frontier Co-op, is accepting the award today. Let's check out their video. At Frontier Co-op, we believe that doing good works. That's why we're breaking down barriers to employment. We offer both on-site childcare and reimbursement options. By making childcare decisions easier, we do good for families. We believe in fair hiring practices that don't disqualify skilled candidates. By recognizing each person's potential, we do good by giving second chances. Our programs offer support like reliable transportation for employees and extra assistance and training for immigrants, refugees, and those struggling with homelessness. By supporting our staff, we do good for our community. At Frontier Co-op, doing good is a mindset. It means going the extra mile for our employees, and it means building a better company where everyone is committed to quality, sustainability, and success. It's a win-win for our people, our products, our customers, and our co-op. Because doing good works. Please help me congratulate the team at Frontier Co-op. Thank you. The next award goes to Raining Rose for its effective training of existing employment needs. Raining Rose prioritizes leadership within the company by emphasizing the value of coaching at all levels. Emerging leaders benefit from personalized coaching sessions two to four times per year, or a development training focused on tools such as coaching others, feedback, and accountability. One group of emerging leaders are known as intern leads. They are responsible for supervising summer interns and their success. At the same time, department managers provide feedback for the leads as they navigate this coaching experience. Last year, the initiative was also created by second shift leaders seeking to develop their leadership skills and build better relationships with their team. The program covers a new leadership topic each month. A unique piece of company training is resources to learn the English language. 
This is very important because at Reigning Rose, employees represent 20 different languages. Brenda Moore, Training and Development Specialist at Reigning Rose, is accepting the award on the company's behalf. Rain Rose's overall training and development system promotes ongoing learning as part of our culture and core value of Evolve. Our company has a history of developing its team members into leaders, and leadership development is offered in a variety of ways. Coaching is an important element of this development. Over the years, coaching has expanded from informal to highly developmental throughout all levels of the organization. The Packaging Leadership Initiative is a program that was requested by leaders within the department who want to continue to cultivate their leadership skills. Equipping Rain Rose team members through training opportunities is an important part of contributing to individual and collective success. Skills and abilities are gained or improved, which supports our team members' success in their current roles and provides opportunities for growth within the company. Professional development aligns with our focus on well-being, specifically as it relates to purpose and personal growth. Continual leadership development will ensure Rain Rose has strong leaders to drive our company forward, as well as engage in our community through volunteer leadership opportunities. Please help me congratulate Brenda and the team from Raining Rose. Thanks, Brenda. Final Workforce Leaders Award uh, Most Effective Retention Strategy goes to Civco Medical Solutions. Civco's engineering rotation program began in 2016 and continues to be one of the most competitive entry level opportunities. This three year program consists of one year rotations, moving employees into different departments each year. At the end of the program, candidates are guaranteed a full time position. Eight engineers have completed the program and seven have remained with the company, proving to be collaborative associates and bringing in invaluable perspective to the table. This same perspective is also encouraged in production associates. Production associates have the opportunity to participate in programs to learn new skills outside of their department. Associates pursue development through tuition reimbursement, online resources, and a voluntary mentorship program that pairs them with company leaders. HR leaders have recently begun working to create career path matrices and will, that will lay out the responsibilities of each role in the department. Civco hopes this resource will promote cross-departmental job movement, giving employees a greater view of the company's operations. Civco Medical Solutions President Robin Thurm is accepting the company's award. Let's watch their video. Hello, I am Robin Thurm, President of Civco Medical Solutions. Knowing Civco's people are our greatest asset, we put considerable emphasis into recruiting the right associates and creating a rewarding work environment. Our focus on employee engagement allows us to continually improve the Civco culture and retention. We ask for regular input from our associates through round robin listening sessions and surveys, and we follow it up with action. We have expanded our paid leave, relaxed our dress code, as well as other policies, and improved how we deliver team building events and celebrations, all based on employee feedback. Civco associates know they are empowered to tackle big challenges and are rewarded when we achieve our goals. We put high value on developing life-changing, life-saving products, delivering quality service, supporting our communities, and having a little fun together while we do so. Our people are who make this all possible. And how about we give another round of applause to all the nominations and the award winners. All right, thank you, Kim, and uh, congratulations to uh, all of our winners so far. We started the day today with a deep dive into one regional company's workforce success, ClickStop. Then we learned about some specific programs that are seeing results, as Kim just mentioned. 
Last on the agenda, we want to honor the corridor's up and coming workforce leaders, or what we like to call all stars. As I touched on at the beginning of the program, Kirkwood began presenting the all stars awards in 2017. The awards are accompanied by the all stars magazine, which highlights these rising star employees. You should all have a copy and those joining us online should have a link to the digital edition. The CBJ has been privileged to assist Kirkwood in the publication of this magazine since 2017. And last year we decided to take it one step further and partner on the presentation of the All Stars Awards. So without further ado, I'd like to invite Tom Cavanaugh and Robin Martin to the stage to present the All Stars Awards. Tom is the production manager for Goodwill of the Heartlands Light Manufacturing Training Program and past chair of the Advanced Manufacturing Sector Board. And Robin is foundation director at the Virginia Gay Hospital and Clinics and a member of the healthcare sector board. Please help me both welcome both Tom Cavanaugh and Robin Martin up to the podium. Thank you, John. I'm going to take Tim's advice and follow the script. I didn't last year, and so I learned a lesson. Uh, as past chair of the Advanced Manufacturing Sector Board, I would be remiss if I did not take this opportunity to mention the Sector Board's new website. Uh, industry Sector Boards have created a resource for students, job seekers, and those supporting them, such as educators, parents, and workforce staff to identify career interest and align that with great careers with businesses here in the corridor. Visitors of the site can use the internet assessment results to search careers in a specific industry and explore how their interests and skills align with careers in more than one industry. To learn more, visit www.explore-careers.org. All right, diving into the awards presentation. Honorees, please start making your way up to the stage the first time you hear your name is read. Uh, when you exit the stage, please exit the stage to the right and so we can get your photo of you with your award in front of the All-Stars photo backdrop. We had many outstanding nominations for 2020 All-Stars and the selection committee had a tough time selecting only two winners in each sector. The selection committee instead chose to honor some of those outstanding individuals as honorable mentions. Let me be the first to congratulate the 2020 All-Star Honorable Mentions. We are very proud of you and your career accomplishments and the leadership you provide in your industry. You all demonstrate a passion for learning, achieving excellence in your industry and leading by example. We're grateful to have several of you here today. So please come up on stage as your name is called and step off the stage to the side of the stage once you receive your certificate so we can maintain social distancing. Seth Boyson of ADM. Jason Barn of Price Electric. Tom Litter of New Leader Manufacturing. Steve Giese of Raining Rose. Katie Sloda, Sloda of Great America Financial. Kaylee Plosell of Balance Fitness and Health. Carrie Lawson of Unity Point St. Luke's. Please help me and congratulate the 2020 All-Star Honorable Mentions.
again, congratulations. The next awards I'll present go to the 2020 All-Star Juniors, Maxwell Firmstone and Elena Elliott. Maxwell Firmstone graduated from City High and completed the Advanced Manufacturing with Robotics and Welding Academy at the Kirkwood Regional Center at the University of Iowa. In this program, he learned three different types of welding and became certified in operating both the lathe and the mill machines. Max took advantage of the resources Kirkwood provides and enjoyed creating physical objects that he can hold in his hand. His ambition and desire to learn new skills within the industry led him to Iowa State University, go Cyclones, where he is now pursuing an industrial design degree. Max is grateful for his time in the academy as it helped him narrow down his interests. Let's take a look at Max's video. My name is Max Firmstone. I go to Iowa City High School. I'm gonna be attending Iowa State in the fall. I got tired of the standard classes at my high school. So I went to academic like visiting day at Kirkwood and you just got to see what all the academies were like. So I went to the advanced manufacturing one. I just kind of went for it. I thought it'd be cool to learn how to weld. I thought the skill would be really useful to just kind of have in my back pocket, you know? And so this class, I mean, like, I had access to, like, a million-dollar lab. And, like, to get access to that, you'd have to work at a place or, like, pay for it, right? Um, but, no, I got it for free. So I'm like, well, I'm here. I'm going to make the most out of it. I don't have much advice for a working professional. Uh, but if you're a student, I would, I would say if you're interested in something or just slightly interested in something, take the time to look into it. Yeah, and don't play it safe. Never play it safe, especially in high school. You know, try to try to make your own path. Don't follow. Don't follow the crowd. Um, those are things that I try to I tried to live by. Max couldn't be here today, but please help me congratulate him as a 2020 Junior All Star. Elena Elliott is double majoring in psychology and soci sociology at Mount Mercy University with a minor in gender studies. She also works as a teaching assistant in the psychology department at Mount Mercy and as a research assistant in the psychology learning lab. Earlier this year, she had an opportunity to present her research at the Iowa Psychological Association Spring Conference. Elena serves as the president of the psychology club on campus and is a member of both Psy Key, an international psychology honor society and the National Society for Leadership and Success. In addition to her academic effort, Elena works as a direct support professional at the ARC of Eat Central Iowa. She attributes both her planning and passion for helping others to her success and balancing all that she achieves. Let's check out Elena's video. My name's Elena Elliott, and I'm a DSP, a direct support professional at the ARC of East Central Iowa. The ARC of East Central Iowa provides services of all kinds for individuals with intellectual and developmental disabilities. I um, provide respite and FCL, supported community living services to consumers of all ages. For respite services, we do fun things like go to movies, we go um, to the splash pad, we go to the Iowa Children's Museum, and SCL, the supported community living. I do those in home um, and I help consumers work on their goals um, to become more independent. There's people I've known since you know, joining the ARC uh, in January of 2018 that I know now today still, and uh, I've been able to watch them grow. I love being able to check in to see how they're doing and to see how they've grown from when I first met them to now. Elena is joining us over Zoom today, so please help me congratulate Elena as a 2020 Junior All-Star.
now to present the ACE Architect Construction and Engineering Sector All-Star Awards. The first honoree is Chris St. Peter, Project Superintendent at Woodruff Construction. Chris came to Woodruff Construction with only framing experience. In the last five years, he has continued to master various carpentry skills, including specialized tasks. These skills have proven extremely useful on many job sites, including the University of Iowa Stead Family Children's Hospital. The unique and large scale nature of this project presented Chris with a leadership opportunity as a foreman. Shortly after that project, Chris decided to enroll at Kirkwood to earn his construction management degree. Now a superintendent, he runs the day-to-day -day operations of the entire construction projects, including renovations for dormitories, urgent healthcare clinics, prison administrative offices, and other sensitive institutional settings. As Chris makes his way to the stage, let's look at his video. My name is Chris St. Peter, and I am a superintendent at Woodruff Construction. As a superintendent, I schedule and communicate with the people involved in the project, especially the subcontractors, to ensure the project is completed on time. I am responsible for the safety of workers on the job site and helping them solve the issues that come up in the course of construction. I love working with people in the construction industry. There are many fun personalities that are very hardworking. The most rewarding part of my job is solving an issue. I love problem solving and being challenged. Challenges come up and require quick, considered decisions. I completed the construction management program at Kirkwood. I had worked for Woodruff prior, but the program provided training needed to run projects with Woodruff. I am continuing to use education as a supplement to my career with management courses through you and I. Please help me congratulate Chris St. Peter for being a 2020 All-Star. Our second ACE All-Star winner is Mike Nemska. Pers pre-construction manager at City Construction. Mike joined City Construction in 2015 while he was studying mechanical engineering. It was there he found construction better suited, better suited his interests. So he stayed with the company after graduation, moving into the role with, with more projects and clients. Mike took a step out of his comfort zone, changing career paths and entering a field that he had not studied. 2018, he took another leap of faith when he was asked to represent city construction on the ACE sector board. This led him to spearheading the first Build My Future ACE event that brought in more than 150 seventh and eighth grade students from 11 different schools for hands-on career expo. Even more impressive, this year's event was on track to bring in 500 students before it was canceled due to COVID-19. Mike urges others to step out of their comfort zone as it can make all the difference. We will now watch Mike's video. My name is Mike Nemshoff and I am the pre-construction manager for city construction in Iowa City. We're a commercial general contractor. Uh, our wheelhouse is in uh, school districts and uh, the university hospitals and uh, the university facilities as well. As a pre-construction manager, I'm in charge of taking a project from uh, basically all the way from pre-construction estimating um, to deliver it to a cost estimate for um, for a project, and closely working with subcontractors and owners to um, to get pricing for each project that we work on. It's challenging. I. I like that it's a challenge. I, I like that it's not uh, just busy work. Uh, everything that I do, I have to think about and be very careful and pay a lot of attention to detail. It's a fun industry to work in. It's always changing and, and people are developing better and faster. And a lot of, There's a lot of job opportunities for people that are, uh, are willing to work and, and put in the work uh, to do something really fun. Congratulations, Mike Nemshaw for being a 2020 All-Star.
The next award category is Advanced Manufacturing, which also has two honorees. The first winner is Ashley Sherman, Packaging Supervisor at Raining Rose. Ashley joined the Raining Rose family as a part-time employee in high school. After moving to Texas, she returned to Cedar Rapids and applied for a position in the sales department. From there, she fulfilled a variety of roles, including accounting and human resources. In her time with the company, Ashley has helped improve efficiency of many operations, including data recording practices that allow Raining Rose to better gauge the necessary manpower for each order. Ashley has also implemented changes that reduced overtime in her department by 11% to less than 5% in just one year. Ashley is a great leader and ensures that her team members receive not only the training they need, but also what they want. Their hard work does not go unnoticed and she is often in promoting team members to new roles. Let's take a look at Ashley's video. My name is Ashley Sherman and I am a second shift floor supervisor at Raining Rose. Raining Rose began as a small operation that produced solely lip balm and has expanded to manufacturing a wide array of natural body care products. I was fortunate to witness the growth of the company from approximately 20 employees to the over 300 that we have today. As supervisor, my job duties include ongoing training and coaching with current team members to help them achieve their goals, adding new members to our second shift family, communicating with sales and other departments to ensure we meet scheduled ship dates, and making sure that my team members have the resources that they need to be successful. The most rewarding part of my job is my team. They're some of the most hardworking people that I've had the opportunity to work alongside, and they have taught me so much. Please help me congratulate Ashley Sherman for being a 2020 All-Star. The next Advanced Manufacturing All-Star is Jake Feldman, Production Manager, Production Planner at ClickStop. Jake started working in ClickStop's small package department six years ago. He excelled and did not take it did not take long for him to be offered a team lead position. This new responsibility allowed him to gain leadership experience while cultivating the skills of his team members. He then took on a role as production manager, which required him not only to help team members with their work, but with how they work. This involves encouraging growth and personal development and presenting the company's core values. Due to restructuring, he returned to shipping before taking his current role. As a production planning planner, Jake creates, updates, and communicates the production schedules for U.S. Cargo Control, which is ClickStop's largest brand. Jake has a natural desire to learn and improve, and through a positive attitude and great leadership, he engages his team members to do the same. Let's watch Jake's video. Hi, I'm Jake Feldman and I am the production planner for U.S. Cargo Control at ClickStop. ClickStop does a lot of things. They actually own 10 different brands, one of which is U.S. Cargo Control, which is our biggest brand and I work under. And uh, under U.S. Cargo Control, we manufacture and sell uh, moving supplies, flatbed truck products, and rigging and lifting supplies. Uh, so as a production planner, I create work orders prioritize the schedule and communicate the schedule out. I also collect the data based on that production schedule and use that to drive action for future processes. I love the culture the most about this job. Uh, working with people from different departments, from different backgrounds, uh, but we all have a common goal and that's really to take ownership of our own career and our own responsibilities. And by doing that and collaborating well, we accomplish a lot. Jake is joining us via Zoom today, so please help me congratulate Jake Feldman as a 2020 All-Star.
I'd now like to invite Robin to the podium to present the final six awards. The next category is business services. Our first all-star is Mitchell Fralick, disability representative at Sedgwick. Mitch has been with Sedgwick for a little over two years and has already earned two promotions across multiple programs and offices. He works hard to complete his workload on time, assist teammates, takes on special projects, and provide thoughtful insight on bigger picture projects. Mitch is a problem solver and has brought solutions to the table on more than one occasion, including his involvement on the cross line of business committee. The committee works to identify and prevent any gaps in communication when claims transition to another line of business. Mitch has gone above and beyond to create resources, get feedback and improve overall workflow. His efforts have not only improved his personal performance, but the performance of his colleagues. Mitch spent time with many examiners to ensure they are organized in their work so the teams can meet deadlines. All of this has helped the company reach its performance goals for consecutive quarters. Let's look at Mitch's video. My name is Mitchell Freywick. I'm a short-term disability coordinator here with Sedgwick. Here at Sedgwick, what we do, we do short-term disability and leave of absence for associates and at different companies like Lowe's, Walmart, uh, Pepsi. So as a short-term disability coordinator, we handle more of the short-term disability side of things when an associate needs to miss for their own serious health condition. We're reviewing uh, medical certification, looking at objective medical, talking to associates and doctor's office to find the objective findings. Uh, so they can get paid for short-term disability. Uh, what I love about my job here is just helping others. You know, nine times out of ten, they're frightened, they're having surgery, they're really ill, or just having a lot of stress. So helping them out, guiding them through the process, um, is just something I love about this job. It just makes it all worth it, and just being there, and then at the end, you know, them personally thanking you, it makes everything all worth it. Mitch is also joining us via Zoom. Congratulations, Mitch Freilich, on your 2020 All-Star Award. Next in the business services category is Fabiola Santana, Talent Acquisition Specialist at Alliant Energy. Fabiola joined Alliant as a human resources intern before accepting a full-time position in May of last year. In this short time, she has proven herself an asset to the company. Fabiola oversees the Iowa and Wisconsin internship programs at Alliant, which involves the recruitment of 50 to 70 interns each year. She also manages all summer intern programs. On top of that, she has gone the extra mile to build campus relationships, student development opportunities, and a future candidate pipeline. Fabiola is also seeking ways to get high school students involved in the industry and educate them on what it is about before they join the workforce. Her efforts alone have diversified Alliance internship program, reduced recruitment costs, and allowed hiring managers to select from a pool of high quality candidates. She is working toward her PHR certification and plans to attend graduate school. We will now watch Fabiola's video. My name is Fabiola Santana and I am a talent acquisition specialist in Cedar Rapids, Iowa for Alliant Energy. And Alliant Energy is a Midwest energy company that distributes electric and natural gas across Iowa and Wisconsin. I am the point of contact for the company's student work opportunities. I manage and support the intern program for the company for both Iowa and Wisconsin, and I also help plan and execute which career fairs our company is going to target for the academic year. I truly believe that one of the most rewarding parts of my role is all of the amazing students that I get to meet along the way. 
I also think that it's amazing to see all of the success stories that come out of the intern program. So to be able to see a candidate that you meet at a career fair eventually land into a full-time leadership role is really great to see. Please help me congratulate Santana on her 2020 All-Star Award. The next category is healthcare. The first all-star award for this category goes to Sam Urock, nurse practitioner at Virginia Gay Hospital and Clinic. Sam began her career with Virginia Gay Hospital in 2018. For those of you who do not know, lack of access to mental health providers is a huge concern in Benton County. Sam was hired to address this need by developing a new behavioral health program at the Venton Family Medical Clinic. She set up establishing protocols, patient schedules, and mentoring relationships. She has already doubled the number of patients in her practice and has plans to play in place to expand the existing program. Sam overcame many challenges throughout this process. One concern was how to merge two different practices in one environment. Sam approached this situation by creating one welcoming environment, but allowing for technical differences in both types of service. For example, mental health appointments are often longer and patients may meet in Sam's office instead of an exam room to discuss their health. Let's take a look at Sam's video. My name is Sam Rock, and I am a psych mental health nurse practitioner here at Virginia Gay Hospitals and Clinics. I assess, diagnose, treat, and evaluate patients based on their medical and mental health needs. Some of the specific things I do in my position here include talking a lot about lifestyle, therapy, medications in order to develop a treatment plan for one's mental health needs working towards overall mental wellness. I love working with my patients, knowing that each day is a new day, starting fresh, you never know what you're going to see. Some words to live by working in the healthcare industry is that healthcare is constantly changing and evolving. And I think uh, through good self care as well as flexibility and just an overall positive attitude we continue to grow with not only the ever-changing field but also with our patients and understanding their ever-changing needs. Please help me congratulate Sam Yurak on her 2020 All-Star Award. The next honoree in this category is Clifton White, Program Manager of Safety and Regulatory Compliance at Unity Point St. Luke's Hospital. Cliff took this position just months before a full hospital joint commission accreditation survey, as well as a random full house state survey. Despite being new, he remained calm and competent throughout these reviews, both of which were successful. In the last year, Cliff has endured many responsibilities that come with being a safety officer amidst a global pandemic. As the key contact with local, state, and federal emergency agencies, he works diligently to coordinate personal protective equipment and report virus information. He must also ensure that facilities remain safe as many processes have been updated. Cliff expanded his involvement in Unity Point safety practices by taking a lead role with the Unity Point Health System Committee on Workplace Violence Prevention. He is described as an innovative wealth of knowledge and a never ending source of best practices, which serves many purposes in the healthcare industry. Let's watch Cliff's video. My name is Clifton White, and I'm the program manager for safety and regulatory compliance. My primary job duties as program manager for safety and regulatory compliance is functioning as the safety officer for the hospital, so ensuring that our physical environment meets the correct national, state, and local codes, such as um, NFPA, the National Fire Protection Association, EPA, Environmental Protection Agency, 
and other codes that ensure for the safety of not only our team members, but all patients and visitors at the hospital as well. To me, the most interesting part of my job is when I do my audits. We do audits on everything from the boiler and steam plants to the generator plant, all the way to the emergency room and the ORs. So just the ability to get to see all facets of the hospital and the healthcare organization is very interesting. To me, one of the most enjoyable parts of my job is just the people I get to work with. Everybody here at St. Luke's is amazing to work with and it just makes for a very enjoyable career. Clifton, congratulations on your 2020 All-Star Award. The next category is informa Information Technologies. Our first award goes to Michael Hoffman, Project Manager at ProCircular. Michael joined ProCircular as a project management intern before being hired full-time. At that time, ProCircular was, in many ways, still operating with challenges of a startup. Despite being new in his career, Michael was able to navigate these challenges by wearing many hats to get the job done. When his team was struggling to find a product for managing resource cap capacity and project delivery, Michael's solution was to build a highly automated user-friendly tool from the ground up. Once the tool was finished, he made sure everyone knew how to use it and he continues to update it for maximum efficiency. His work on the, this tool saved the team thousands in licensing fees and is used daily to help leadership make decisions. As a personal goal, Michael earned a certified associate in project management certification. We will now watch Michael's video. My name is Michael Hoffman and I'm a project manager at ProCircular. So ProCircular is an information security and privacy firm that helps our clients manage cybersecurity risk through various services such as ethical hacking, governance, risk and compliance, and manage SIM services. So in my role, my primary responsibility is managing our client's project from start to finish. This entails making sure that our projects are completed on time, under budget, and within the scope of our work. It also means managing our client relationships to ensure our customers feel valued and return to ProCircular time and time again. I would say the most rewarding part of my job is seeing the project through to success and knowing that our team helps make our clients more secure. The thing I love most about the, my job are the people that I get to work with. ProCircular is fortunate enough to have such a talented and fun staff. It makes every day really fun, and I would say that's what I love most about my job. Congratulations, Michael Huffman, on your 2020 All-Star Award. Next in the IT category is Steve Hoover, Service Desk System Analyst at Collaborance. Steve came to the company in 2016, looking to combine his love of technology with his love of people. In his first role as a triage specialist, he focused on learning the company's processes and expanding his knowledge in any way possible. He was quickly promoted to a tier one user support specialist where his leadership and educational skills became apparent. He accepted responsibility for training new hires and made sure to explain the why behind each process, allowing trainees to better retain information. Having mastered his tier one role, he was promoted to the tier two position of systems analyst in early 2019. Since then, Steve has worked to improve training operations within the company. This includes learning new systems, educating colleagues, making configuration decisions, and coordinating migration efforts. In addition, he leads internal education efforts using creative presentations to keep technicians engaged. Most recently, Steve developed and delivered a one-on-one -on -one training curriculum for newer technicians and get to gain exposure. Let's take a look at Steve's video. My name is Steve Hoover, and I am a Service Desk Systems Analyst for Collaborance. 
Collaborance is a master managed service provider. We act as a help desk and remote management solution for our customers' IT infrastructure and systems. I work to resolve tickets escalated by our tier one techs and work on proactive maintenance issues for our customers' patching, antivirus, and backups. I've also been helping to develop and execute our training and documentation processes. In addition to my normal duties, I deliver continuing education classes to help train our team, um, work on updating and expanding our knowledge base, and act as a resource for our tier one technicians to help expand their skill sets. Seeing techs that I've had the opportunity to train grow into valuable parts of our team is extremely rewarding. Um, work takes up a huge part of our lives and being able to help someone find their footing and grow successfully into a new career makes me feel like I'm making a difference. Steve is joining us via Zoom. Please help me congratulate Steve Hoover as a 2020 All-Star. The last category I'll present recognizes All-Stars in the transportation sector. The first transportation All-Star is Erica Bellock. Marketing Manager at Thompson Truck and Trailer. Erica joined Thompson Truck and Trailer about a year ago with no previous experience in the industry. Taking this challenge head on, she has worked hard to learn as much as she can about each area of the business, and she remains involved with all departments. When she was hired, she vocalized her desire to be a valuable member of the leadership team, a goal that she has since achieved with ease. Erica serves as a vice chair of the transportation sector board and wasted no time getting involved. She manages the Facebook pages of both the ICR sector board and the sector board portal committee, working to increase engagement and followers. She assists in content creation from the industry specific videos to informative flyers. Erica is also involved with the Roland Rally committee and was responsible for designing the 2020 drawing contest picture. We will now take a look at Erica's video. My name is Erica Bog. I am marketing manager of Thompson Truck and Trailer. Thompson is a local family-owned full-service truck dealership that's been able to grow and build across Eastern Iowa and Western Illinois over the last 20 years. My overall role as marketing manager is to develop and execute a robust marketing strategy that aligns with the overall mission and objectives of the company. Designing flyers and promotions, providing the sales team with the tools and resources that they need, developing targeted email campaigns, and posting on our social channels. Our president, Travis Thompson, started off as a diesel mechanic and has worked in nearly every position before becoming CEO and president in 2013. I think that makes him an especially effective leader, that he knows all of the different facets of the business. Um, all the people at Thompson are hardworking and dedicated to providing the best possible customer service. Please help me congratulate Erica Bellock on her 2020 All-Star Award. The second All-Star Award in this category goes to Andrew Lindley, Towing and Recovery Operator at Reds Towing, Inc. Andrew joined the Reds Towing family five years ago, working on small towing and recovery jobs. Many people do not realize that this line of work includes responding to the scenes of major accidents or meeting with families who have come to retrieve a loved one's belongings. This is sensitive work and Andrew demonstrates great care. Andrew's expertise and dedication have been an asset not only to Red's towing, but to first responders. They rely on Andrew and his team to get the job done and keep the roads clear for everyone's safety. In more severe accident time, it is, is an important, in more severe accidents, time is an important factor. And Andrew's experienced operating is a crucial aid for all first responders and key to saving lives. Since his initial role, he has transitioned to towing and recovery semi trucks, as well as recovering farm implements and fields and hauling equipment. 
Andrew is quick to answer his phone day or night and is up for any challenge. Let's play Andrew's video. Uh, my name is Andrew Lindley and I work for Reds Towing and Transport. Here at Reds Towing, I'm uh, operations manager for the towing and transport side. My day-to-day -day operations include uh, operating a semi with a trailer, uh, delivering equipment if needed, um, hopping in either the light duty wrecker or the heavy duty semi wrecker, pulling people off the roads or pulling them out of the ditches. They break down emergency roadside, uh, tire changes, might go out of state for a semi call. Every accident's different, every scene's different. Uh, you kind of just learn the challenges out there and the angles, how to work it, and, and just go from there. What I love most about my job is uh, going home at the end of the day and just knowing that you, uh, you fulfilled your duties and you uh, made sure everybody got home safe and uh, did your job right. Andrew Lindley was not able to join us today, but let's congratulate Andrew and all of our 2020 All-Stars. All right, thank you so much, Robin and Tom. I'd also like to uh, thank our platinum sponsor one more time. Please help me give uh, Kirkwood Community College another round of applause for this. Before we go uh, in a journey in just a minute, I did want to mention a couple upcoming uh, CBJ events. Coming up next week on October 2nd, we will host our annual manufacturing conference. This event invites industry leaders to network, learn about best practices in the region and build a stronger talent pipeline. We have an excellent lineup of speakers, including the economist Ernie Goss, Deb Durham, Debbie Durham of the Iowa Economic Development Authority, Ru Patel, the former plant manager of General Mills and Charles Hughes Jr. of Collins Aerospace. We would typically hold that event in person. However, we have decided it, to offer it for free as a live webinar this year to make it more accessible. You can find a complete list of our speakers and topics and register on our website at corridorbusiness.com slash events. And then coming up on October 15th, we will host the 16th annual 40 Under 40 Awards. This event identifies and honors 40 leaders under the age of 40 who are making a significant impact at their community and in their company. Similar to today's luncheon, in-person attendance is limited to the honorees. However, we will also stream that event live as a Zoom webinar. And again, you can sign up at our website, again, at corridorbusiness.com. I wanna thank all of you for being in person. I wanna thank all of you for viewing online. Keep reading the weekly Corridor Business Journal, and we are adjourned. Thank you very much.